Let's be honest, we've all been there. We're standing there in front of our team. It's all, we can do this. Let's smash those targets. We're gonna make this happen. And then you walk back to the office, close the door, and suddenly it hits you like a wave. Oh my God, how are we gonna do this? Are we gonna do this? Is this gonna happen? This, this is a crisis of confidence. And today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I tackle mine using the self build up protocol. Welcome back guys, so good to have you here. My name is Priyanka and I spend my time on YouTube talking to other business managers and owners like me about anything and everything that can help us build happy and healthy businesses. If this is something you're interested in, do subscribe to the channel. And if you do find something helpful in this video, we would really appreciate a like. Right, back to business, literally. Crisis of confidence, I get it, sounds so dramatic, but the truth is, when you're running a business, the vice grip of losing confidence in yourself and your work can be devastating. I find that my crises tend to creep up on me quite gradually, actually. It's never a big event or it doesn't come with any warning. I tend to start avoiding anything new. I begin burying myself in work that's familiar to me or something that I'm really used to doing. I find that there's a dull hum of I can't or I'm scared or I'm not sure or I don't know what I'm doing, you know, kind of buzzing at the back of my head. Team meetings start becoming a really big event in my head and I start sort of getting knots in my stomach and unsure about what I'm doing and do I really want to go and what if they ask me something I don't know about. And I find if I don't read the signs, this grayness just tends to fester and grow and grow and grow. And before I know it, I'm in a complete state of avoidance and procrastination, which as you know, in business is really, really harmful to the bottom line. This and the fact that the grayness, I think eventually does seep out and affect the team. Um, because if the leader is not in their strong self, there is no way that the team can stay immune from this. This is where the crisis of confidence that you're experiencing really does get damaging because it's not just about you. It does start affecting the other people in your team too. A crisis of confidence is defined as a situation when people stop believing that someone or something is good. I believe this happens when you are either struggling with low self-esteem or with low confidence. Of course, it's possible to be struggling with both, but I tend to find for me, it's usually one or the other. Just in case you're like me when I first started researching this and you don't know the difference between the two or even the fact that there is a difference. Self-esteem is essentially what you think about yourself and what you think you are worth. Self-confidence on the other hand is the confidence or faith you have in yourself to do something. Confidence to speak in public or confidence to give a presentation. Confidence to research a certain project yourself. So a quick way to sort of assess it would be self-esteem being what you think about yourself and self-confidence being what you think you can do. Now, what really blew my mind when I was researching this, babies are born with perfect levels of esteem and confidence. Marissa Piers actually describes this really well in some of her talks, where she explains how when the baby is born, not for a second are they like, oh no, don't look at me, I'm not feeling confident today, or I'm not liking, I'm not liking myself today. And they are displaying perfect levels of self-esteem and confidence pretty much all the time. I'll include her link to one of her videos in the description box below. Do check it out. It is a very good listen. So what does this mean for us? Well, if low confidence or low self-esteem are not genetic, this means that we can actually do something to improve them. And this is where the self build up protocol begins. Okay, let's turn to step one, diagnose. First things first, you have to figure out the root basis of your crisis of confidence. Is it coming from low self-esteem or low self-confidence? I feel the distinction is important because the actions you're going to take to build yourself up would be different in either scenario. I've made a list of questions so that I can figure out which one I'm feeling or which one I'm going through. I've included a link to one of my articles where I've got a downloadable PDF. So be sure to check that out if you do want more detail on that. So I can tell that I'm struggling with a bit of low self-esteem when I answer yes to the majority of these questions. Are you currently feeling that your thoughts or your work are worthless? Is your mind mostly focused on your weaknesses and your shortcomings? And is it really difficult to see any strengths or merits that you may have? 
Are you finding it difficult to list your skills and accomplishments? Are you repeatedly comparing yourself to others and does this as a result make you feel worse? Is it difficult for you to hear positive feedback from others? Do you get overly sensitive when you receive criticism, even if it's constructive? Is decision making and sticking to your decisions difficult for you right now? When you're around people socially, do you feel uncomfortable? There are a few more questions that you can look into in the PDF, but essentially you can get the gist of what you're trying to figure out in yourself. You know, are you feeling bad about yourself? Is there a feeling of really not being able to see the wood from the trees, of being very low about what your worth is and what your value is? Turning to low self-confidence, again, if you're saying yes to the majority of these questions, chances are this is what the basis of your struggle is. Do you avoid speaking up or getting noticed at work or in a big group meeting for risk of embarrassing yourself? Are you constantly feeling anxious about your work just because you're really nervous about what the outcome's going to be? Do you catch yourself often worrying about what other people are thinking about you? Have you stopped spending time on yourself and giving yourself the self-care to look good and feel good? Are you avoiding taking on new challenges at work for fear of failing at it? Do you constantly need other people to check your work and your decisions because you're constantly second guessing yourself? And is your body language kind of closed off and shying away? Do you find yourself to be generally more pessimistic rather than optimistic? And is change really difficult for you to accept and embrace? So by now you should have figured out which one it is that is giving you the most trouble. And based on that, we go to the next step. Step number two, which is the inner foundation, rebuild. Step number two is all about the inner. We can't even imagine going to the outer and getting more productive and actually powering through our task list until we actually work on what the inner lack or the inner lowness that we're feeling. And this is the foundation that we have to build upon which the outer work will stand. So if you feel through step number one that low self-esteem is what you're actually struggling with, I like to follow the three steps outlined by Marissa Piers. Again, link to the video down below. Number one, you've got to start praising yourself. Don't be tempted to skip this step. I know it's really difficult to be thinking about looking in a mirror and saying, oh, you look good today. Oh, Priyanka, you can do this. I know how hard it is to look in a mirror and to give yourself compliments or to give yourself a pat on the back for a job well done or the fact that you turned up to work or the the fact that you got out of bed and you're giving the day a go or that you're actually working to fix this crisis of confidence that you're going through but if your inner self doesn't hear you yourself praising yourself there is no way it can expect to hear it from anybody else and there is no way that you're going to value yourself as being worth anything if you don't let the good stuff come in so step number one you've got to start praising yourself so a little tip if you really do struggle with this is to just pop on YouTube um, and look for an affirmations track. That's what they are. I do it. I listen to an affirmations track every morning just off YouTube. Um, statements where they are saying things like, I am love, I am happy, I'm grateful. Anything that basically builds you up from the inside. Repetition is great, you've got to do it every day. Just one session of looking in the mirror and reluctantly saying nice things to yourself, unfortunately won't cut it. So give it a good go. And ideally, if you can, make it a part of your morning routine. It's the perfect time of day to be doing this kind of work. Next, you've got to correct and redesign the reality you are living in. First, by changing the imagery in your mind. And secondly, the language you speak. We are constantly running a visual track in our mind, whether we know it or not. You've got to do some work to replace that track. And one of the ways I did it was to close my eyes and imagine like a complete dream scenario. If there were no obstacles in the world, what would it look like? I'd imagine a huge office with lots of light coming in, a, a brilliant team, everyone's laughing, there's smiling faces. I'm coming in, I'm feeling warm, I can smell the coffee. The phone is ringing, the team is busy. I know exactly where my office is. I'm walking straight to my office and I'm feeling a sense of confidence a sense of achievement and then as I sit at my desk I'm seeing my uh, work nicely piled on the side or maybe I've got the latest laptop and I'm working away in a happy sense uh, or another technique could be and I've done this before actually write down sort of a snapshot of your day as if it was a movie so if you take the effort put some music on write it all out imagine your home life going into work what does it feel like what's happening at work and then it becomes a bit easier for you to read the entry at another time 
time if you're really creative and you maybe do it on the computer or in your book maybe add some pictures in from pinterest or google to give your vision some color what i'm trying to get at is that you've got to give your brain an alternate reality something that makes your inner self feel that you're not in a state of lack or fear or anxiety but in fact you're in a state of hope positivity, belief, a state where anything is possible. So any way you can find to tap into that visual imagery in your mind, figure it out and make it happen. Next, we turn to the language. This was an aha moment for me when I first read about this. Have you noticed that when we're in a bad state, we're so quick at using very sort of hyperbolic language, very much like, oh my God, I hate that. Or um, it was an awful meeting. or oh, that was such a nightmare. And then do you find that the more you're using this language, the more frequently it's coming out and it's so difficult to talk differently. So everything becomes like such a mess and everything such a waste of time. So the change that has to happen here is you've got to really consciously dial that back and you've got to change your language. So a nightmare becomes a challenge. Something that's nerve wracking becomes exciting. Something that's hopeless becomes a possibility. You know what negative language you've let seep into your life. Unfortunately, you've got to let it go and you've got to bring yourself into a more balanced state in how you're speaking. So you've started praising yourself, you're working on redesigning your reality. What comes next? Next, you've got to let praise in. You know when that colleague says, oh, thank you, Priyanka, that was amazing, or that customer is like, oh, that's perfect. Rather than defaulting into that, oh, no, no, it's nothing. Oh, oh, I just did that last minute. Or, oh, I didn't get everything right. Rather than defaulting into that, first things first, look them in the eye and say, thank you. Even if you don't believe it to start off with, eventually you will. By consciously saying thank you, you're letting that little girl or that little boy inside you hear what he or she needs to hear to feel better about themselves. Doing the inner work for a low sense of self-confidence works a bit differently to self-esteem. It's not about a gradual program or a process that you follow. Instead, there are different scientific techniques that you can use at different times based on what your situation is and what your particular trouble is that you can use. So let's run through them. Acting as if. I'm sure you've heard this before, but this is where it fits in. You essentially have to act as if you have a perfect sense of confidence to do whatever it is you are holding yourself back from doing. You've got to clear your mind of limiting thoughts and behave as if there is nothing holding you back. Agree to give that speech in front of your whole company. Agree to go and see that awkward client. Design a new product. Interview that new web developer you've been avoiding to interview. Before long, acting as if will morph into actually is. Personally, I find that this technique only really works when I feel strong enough to hold this intention for a number of days. It doesn't really work for me when I have a short period of time and I have to act really quickly. The second one, and I low-key love this one, is posing like a superhero. This is great for when you need an instant turnaround of mindset. You simply stand up from your chair, stick your chest out, chin up, and put your hands on your hip and just look up as though you're a superhero for as long as you need to think, right, I've got this. Apparently, Professor Amy Cuddy of Harvard University has suggested that standing like this releases a boost of testosterone and gives you that gumption to do what you've got to do. I'll let you into a secret. I sometimes do this in the bathroom before a difficult meeting. That's not weird. That's weird. No, it's not weird. It's weird if someone sees it. It's not weird if I'm doing it and it's working for me. Seriously, do it, it works. Next technique is what would your hero do? We all have that hero or that mentor that we look up to, even if we haven't met them in life. For me, I think it might be Oprah. The idea is when you've run out of answers yourself, you revert to your mentor or your role model, whoever you know a good deal about of how they would cope or you could imagine how they would cope in a similar scenario. Just give it a moment, think, what would they do in this situation? And then just do that. So an example that comes to mind is a customer with whom I had to have a difficult conversation. I was avoiding it like the plague because I knew the moment I sat there on the phone talking to this customer, it was going to 
be difficult. So Oprah was who I channeled at the time in prep for the meeting. And a few of the realizations I had was any critique that the customer would give, Oprah wouldn't take it personally. In fact, she'd probably be able to turn it around by uh, listening to the customer, really making them feel heard, and perhaps even going so far as brainstorming some solutions with the customer directly. I also came to the conclusion she'd be polite, she'd be present, she'd be empathetic. And lo and behold, I go and have the conversation with the customer as Oprah. And half the things that I had imagined in my worst case scenario didn't come to pass. And in fact, it was actually quite pleasant. So thanks, Oprah. Give it a go. You might be surprised what you come up with. The fourth technique that has been proven to work is to simply imagine what you want. So pretty much like the visualization in the self-esteem in a rebuild, you want to flood your mind with positive imagery and immerse yourself in a visualization of all the wonderful things that could come to pass. What you will find is it will give you a lot more inner strength. And lastly, the fifth technique to help with low self-confidence is to do a dry run. Honestly, I don't quite know why this works but it does. So if I have to have a awkward meeting, for instance, if I have to let somebody go from their job, I'll take a moment, I'll sit down, close my eyes, and I will imagine the conversation that we have. I will calmly put my points of view across. I will listen to when the employee is explaining their feelings. I will be clear in my delivery. The employee will understand my position. We will get up and we will leave on good terms. By doing that dry run beforehand, I feel like I've worked out a lot of my anxieties in that visualization process. Again, I don't quite know why this works, but for some reason it does. Do give it a try, especially if you have a particular event that is rattling your confidence. Doing a dry run is a great exercise for that. Okay, so now we turn to the third step of the self build up protocol, outer action momentum. This step comes once you've diagnosed what your issue is and you've done all the relevant inner work to build yourself up. One of the biggest fallouts for me of a crisis of confidence is my action or my productivity in my work really dwindles down because I get very, very fearful or stuck in a rut. So if I'm to truly fix this issue, getting back to my normal levels of productivity is essential. So I go into a bit more detail in the actual blog, but the essential thrust of this step is that you've got to gently coax yourself back into your normal levels of productivity. Rather than doing your hardest, deepest, most creative work first. So I will start off by focusing on a lot of my quick tasks or things that don't really need me to be massively present. So that bit of filing or sending that email or that follow-up call or looking at a report and giving some feedback. Anything that's quick and isn't using massive powers of creativity because the whole point is that your, your mind or your inner self is preoccupied by this crisis of confidence that you're going through. So by focusing on the quantity of work and just getting things ticked off that list what's actually happening is you start creating a bit of a momentum and that's the momentum you're going to use to coax yourself to start tackling some of the tougher tasks and eventually coming to a point that you're doing that deep work or that creative work that is absolutely fundamental to your role. For me, depending on the severity of the crisis of confidence, this process tends to take roughly between two to five days. I think on average three to four days, I'd say. The good news is the moment you start feeling good from any or all of the work that you're doing in step two, you can start activating step three to build your outer action momentum up. A crisis of confidence, unfortunately, is not a one-time occurrence. It has this way of bubbling up at the oddest of times. Sometimes it's a short period that you can bring yourself back from very quickly. And unfortunately, at other times, it can feel like a permanent grayness for which you have to do a lot of work to bring yourself back from. The good news is, all of this, it's like building a muscle. The more you practice, the more adept you become. If it does bubble up and it does come around again, you'll know exactly what to do. And perhaps you might even make a self build up protocol of your very own. How does that look now? That's a bit better.
Okay. So we're gonna stop.